kids and jam friends. Even though the many stories in the Bible are of many different people, the true stories in the Bible are all part of one big story, the story of Jesus. In this next unit, we are going to learn about God's power and how he uses Moses to save his people out of Egypt. Say it with me. God is the deliverer. In Genesis, Adam and Eve lived in God's perfect world, but when they sinned, people were separated from God. God made a promise to send the Savior who would bring people closer to God again. Sometime later, God made a promise to Abraham that the Savior would come through his family. Then we learned about his son Isaac and Isaac's son Jacob, and Jacob had a son named Joseph. Now, God worked in Joseph's life, making him a very important leader in the country of Egypt. Later, Joseph's whole family came to live in Egypt, and over many years of Abraham's family, the Israelites, grew and grew until there were thousands and thousands of them. But then, a new pharaoh, an Egyptian king, began to rule over Egypt. He did not know about Joseph, and he didn't really care about the Israelites, that, that they were God's people. In fact, Pharaoh made God's people slaves. The Israelites had a very hard life, and many, many have wondered if God knew about their problems. Had God forgotten them? No. God would deliver, save his people because of his great love for them. Because Pharaoh was worried that the Israelites would, uh, you know, there are so many of them, they would take over Egypt, he ordered that all their baby boys be thrown into the Nile River and be drowned. Everyone's life is valuable to God, especially tiny babies. So having these babies killed was a really evil thing for Pharaoh to do. During this time, one mother gave birth to a baby boy. To save her baby, this mother hid him until he was about three months old. By that time, he was probably making a lot of so much noise, you know, babies cry, and he couldn't be hidden anymore. If Pharaoh's soldiers found him, they would throw him into the river. To give the baby boy a chance to live, his mother put him in a waterproof basket and she put the basket in the Nile River. Maybe she hoped that the basket floated on the river and someone would find her baby and give him a home. She trusted God to protect her little boy. And God did. Pharaoh's daughter found the baby. She felt sorry for him because he was crying. So she took him to um, grow, you know, raise him up to be her son in the palace. Pharaoh's daughter named the baby Moses. While Moses was being raised in a beautiful palace, the Israelites had much different life. They were suffering as slaves to Pharaoh. They might have wondered if God even cared about them. It seemed to be a hopeless situation because the people were not able to deliver themselves out of um, from being slaves. As Moses grew up, he noticed the Israelites were being treated really badly. One day, Moses became so angry when he saw an Egyptian beating an Israelite. Moses ended up doing something terrible. He killed the Egyptian. He sinned against God. When people found out what he had done, Moses ran away from Egypt to a land called Midian. Moses became a shepherd, got married, and had two sons, and 40 years went by. Moses was still a shepherd in Midian, and God's people were still slaves in Egypt. The Israelites continued to cry out to God to save them. And God heard. He knew. Never once had God forgotten his people. And never once did he stop loving and caring for them. One day, Moses saw something strange. A bush was on fire. But unlike a normal bush or a normal fire, this bush wasn't burning up. Moses decided to take a closer look. This was no ordinary burning bush. The Bible says the angel of the Lord spoke out of the bush. I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. I have indeed seen the misery of my people in Egypt. I have heard them crying out because of their slave drivers, and I am concerned about their suffering. So now go. I am sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. Moses was shocked. God was telling him and sending him to Egypt? But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? But God told Moses, I will be with you. God was going to deliver his people and he was going to use Moses to help. God is the deliverer. Remember God said the same thing to Jacob when Jacob was scared of, um, about Esau? 
God said, I will be with you. So Moses asked, but if I go to the people, who should I say sent me? God answered and said, you will tell them that I am sent you. God called himself I am because he always has been and always will be. And God said to Moses, I am keeping the promise I made to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I will deliver my people, the Israelites, and do wonders in Egypt so they will know I am God. They will leave Egypt and have everything they need. God used Moses to keep his promise. And Moses was part of God's plan to save his people from slavery. The Israelites needed to be free from slavery in order to move to the land God had promised. God told Moses to go to Pharaoh and say, let my people go. But because Moses still wasn't sure about his plan, God showed Moses several signs to prove he is the one true God and he has the power to deliver. One of the signs was God turning Moses' staff, his like stick that usually shepherds use um, to tend sheep. Um, he, God turned it into a snake and then God turned it back into a staff. Even though God showed Moses he is powerful, Moses was still not sure. He said, you know, I'm not able to speak really well in front of a public or in front of the crowd. But God said uh, Moses' brother Aaron, who was back in Egypt, could speak for Moses and help him out when they went to see Pharaoh. Moses obeyed God and left Midian. On the way, he met Aaron. Together, they traveled to Egypt to tell Pharaoh that God said, let my people go. Will Pharaoh listen? Will he let God's people go? We'll find out next week. But remember, God knows and cares about every detail of your life. When you are going through hard times, thank God that he knows about your problems, about your life, and that he cares. Then ask God to help you. You can trust God to be your fortress and deliverer.